I'm really proud of the fact that I've actually sat down for nine months of my life and done a job that absolutely sucked. Um, <laughs> you know, it taught me that that's not the life you want. My name is Pablo Robert Woodward. It used to be Pablo Souza Santos. And now it's the Disco Bunny. My profession, a liver of life, Pablo Woodard, or better, just the Disco Bunny. That's my profession. The Disco Bunny is a spreader of love. It's a spreader of positive energy. Uh, my mission statement is to unite people. Don't care how old you are, what age you are, what gender, race, religion, orientation. It's got nothing to do with that. You're a human being. And my objective as the Disco Bunny is to put humans together. When my first video went viral, 50 million views within no time at all. The beautiful moment was that I had my boombox um, on my bicycle and there was a gentleman called Pandora who's like, oh, mate, you're so funny, I cracked four ribs last time I saw you. So funny, cracked four ribs, I'm gonna follow you. Wherever you're going, I'm going too. So I started disco bunny, put on the little A4 sign and it's just every day. This happens every day, only this particular moment was captured on film. I decided there and then, oh, twist and shout. An old granny came along, she crossed the road. You know, it was bent over double, and she, had, she was dancing like this, and she'd get into it. It was interesting about that particular clip, the Disco Bunny mission to unite people, irrespective of age, we've got all ages there, and old granny, young people, gender, men and women, race, people of all sorts of different skin colours, you can see, age, gender, race, orientation, physical or mental abilities. You've got Pandora, you know, the guy at the beginning, he's, he, he's got one, one leg, basically, and he's on the ground tapping with the stick, you know, physical ability, the old granny, uh, like that. And that was Monday, three o'clock in the afternoon. The most beautiful thing of the effect of the disco bunny on people um, is the involuntary reaction. Sometimes I think people control themselves too much, they control their emotions. And the disco bunny is like, it ignites a reaction inside. For me, uh, it, it is beautiful to see that in people. When I started the disco bunny, I was in a house, my own house. And I thought to myself, wow, this is not my dream. Society had told me that one gets a house and one has stuff in the house, bedrooms, furniture, stuff like this. And when one has that, one feels comfortable. I felt restricted. My castle was like a prison and it lacked love and all this extra stuff, possessions, uh, it doesn't actually improve the quality of your life. And I literally took the rug away from myself and decided this is it, I'm changing my life, I don't need this, I don't even want this. The Disco Bunny is about rediscovering who on earth I am and going back to my roots, um, the simplicity of my life. I don't know where I was born exactly, but Brazil, 
um, was where I assume I'm going to go for what I've been told, uh, which was I was born in Brazil and I was adopted at the age of sort of six or seven in Salvador and I was a really happy kid. I had beautiful memories or a sentiment of happiness. There are um, some papers that detail sort of abandonment, moving, no ownership or claim to, to the boy who was me, Pablo Sosa Santos. It's a trip down memory lane that I just kind of put a big block on growing up, you know. I was really attentive to all discussions about Brazil, but I blocked it. You look at a six or seven year old kid and, and you imagine taking them from their comfort, throwing them in a whole new world. Yeah, my parents are English, terribly English. When I say terribly English, I mean quintessentially English. They have a wonderful accent. I do see them, yeah. We, you know, we have a relationship um, which has been filled with ups and downs. Every time I see them, um, it changes our relationship. Remember that burn? Do, do you ever recall me having that? <laughs> Before? You, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. So this is my mum. Uh, I call her Ma quite often. Uh, she's also known as Stella Woodward, AKA Stella Woodward. Today as well, she's in Brighton and I'm very happy. And I'm having a look at some photos here. So it's kind of like a trip down memory lane. And this is the Brazil ones, which I haven't seen for years. Well, this is the first photograph we were given. Can we have a look, Sasha? Of Pablo, um, we were sent this. This is the little boy who you may or may not wish to adopt. And we've got one happy and one sad over the page. Mm. So this is like the first photo on file, basically. Yes. Yeah, of, of me. So it's kind of like when I reflect my second life, as I like to call it, starts here, because prior to this moment, it's you only... Have very few memories. It's only, yeah, memories. I always say my first life was my life in Brazil, in the orphanage that I recall, but maybe I had another life before. I don't have any memory of my real parents, my birth parents, you know? I don't have a memory of a single relative. Prior to the orphanage, where I understood I was there for a good two years or so, prior to that, I really have no recollection. <sighs> it was just a big room, I think, pretty much. The walls were white. And we all slept in, on, on the floor we in the room? on the floor, yes. Yeah. This is like my home, basically. It was, yes. Yeah. It was terribly emotional, yes. For all the parents. And of course, we couldn't converse with the children. I didn't really understand the process of adoption, but I did understand in the orphanage that people left and they never came back. You know, I always liken it to the claw from Toy Story. You know, you look up in the sky, you see a plane, and the plane is like the claw. It comes down and it takes a child from the orphanage, and that child could be your best friend, and they're gone. You know, never to be seen again. Where did they go? Who do they go with? I just don't understand, you know? But I want to go on the plane, yeah? So for me, it was, it was like that. So did they tell you that you were adopted? They did, they did, but it's unfathomable. You we are going to take you to this world. You know, it's just like if a Martian came down and said, I'm going to take you to Mars. You're like, mm, I think I get it, but you don't. You know, and then you go there and then you're there. And then you're like, well, now you're here. There's no going back. So, no, I think it's so hard to explain. Oh, I think it was a huge culture shock, yes. He hadn't uh, any English, of course, and we were advised not to learn Portuguese because otherwise he would not adapt to English very quickly. Well, he certainly anglicised because he was living with a very British couple <laughs> and in a 
very English environment and went to uh, private school and so on. But he's always had a sparkle and a smile and a sense of getting on with people. And, um, he brought us a lot of joy, uh, really, into our lives when we adopted him. And then that sort of changed into a lot of uh, difficult times when you were a teenager. I think he was sort of realising about his um, origins. He was never really going to find out about them and, and uh, he couldn't quite accept that. I'm trying to have a normal relationship with them. Um, one that is based on love, you know, trust, understanding and appreciation. Um, so I see them, they're not my friends. It's as simple as that, you know, as in spending time with them does not make me feel good about myself. But nevertheless, they are my parents. And so I will honour them as parents and forever try and have a better relationship with them. Well, we, we, Pablo is very talented in many ways, but his weakness is application, sadly. And we feel he's sort of wasting himself. And now he's taken on this and chooses not to have a home of any permanence. And he lives from hand to mouth, don't you? Yeah. Um, I do have pots and buckets. Do you have a special drain you empty it into? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been homeless almost every single year of my life. My first experience, I think I was 18 years old, and I left my parents in Dorset and I went to London. I went out and I started sleeping on the streets. You know, I slept on park benches. I slept on top of two phone boxes. It was not a joyful experience. My number one priority is to be happy. My greatest sense of happiness was in Brazil, where, you know, in the orphanage, where I had nothing. A friend said to me, you wear your heart on your sleeve. Another one said, you're a nomad. That means I'm bubbling with emotion and I feel and I express it's part of who I am. I'm a nomad means where I lay my head is my home. At the moment I'm in Leeds. I don't really know where I'm going. I kind of, I'm in Leeds now. I haven't worked out if I'm going north, south, west or east. Last night I stayed at a guy called Tom. Uh, no, that was the night before, uh, a guy called Sam. Um, and yeah, he was really kind. I got to sleep in a whole bed, uh, which was awesome. Hey, yeah? All right? All right, All right yeah. <laughs> right, let's go. Arrivederci! Touring, it's about getting people to know more about the disco bunny. It's about change, it's about fresh, it's about challenge. It's about stepping out of your comfort zone. And it terrifies me, but I learn. The moment I put my hair in bunches, the moment I put on the attack, the moment I put on the dust disco body outfit, there's a shift. It's about taking it to places where it hits them even harder, where they need even more of the joy. When people say, don't go to Luton, that's where I need to go. When I went to Luton and places like that, that's when the change from to and then just go for it. I think some towns feel like they've been left behind. Just like my thing. What do you mean by that? I've been hit, I've been spat on, somebody swung a bottle at me. The man said to me, what are you? Are you fucking gay? Excuse my language. I was just like, you what? Yeah, 
Yeah, there are two. There are two Britons. You know, uh, one Briton is keep things as they are, keep things as they were, and the others. Yes. Are you gay? Am I gay? You really want to know, don't you? Thank you very much for coming in today. Henry, thank you for the invitation. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Um, and tell us a bit about what you do, Papa. Well, I've just... Um, my mission is just basically to spread happiness. When I'm the disco bunny, I have no problems, which is ridiculous, yes. My life is perfect because it's not about me, it's about you, and I care so much about you. When I started the Disco Bunny, I was crying every single night in my car. I'm earning 20 pounds. Everybody thinks I'm a nutter. I'm not even established. The, the living from hand to mouth is, is challenging beyond belief. You know, it pushes me. I basically say, quite honestly, I'm someone who's going to break through and break down. I think if you have a dream, you sometimes have to <laughs> go through these challenges. Um, I have been living hand to mouth for two years. I just believe that it's what I have to go through. You know, it's part of my endurance uh, process to, to get what I want. But Dad and I also think you should um, be more, or be at least a little bit responsible towards your children. Yeah. And that you're not. And mm. So we think that if you want to do this sort of thing, do it by all means, but have some form of income as well. Yeah, well, I From will. Your, one of your many talents. Having daughters was, it was the first time I saw my own flesh and blood. Um, so it was a real magical thing. Um, I have the most beautiful relationship with my daughters. I've given them everything I possibly can as a parent. I know every parent says that, but I was uh, acutely aware of who I am as an individual, of my beliefs. Um, from my experience of life, from the problems, the hurdles, the challenges I've had. I took him around the world. I took him from Australia to China, then we flew to England, went to Glastonbury Festival with my children. It was just the, mo the most wonderful period of our lives, and even though they're so young, we talk about it. When I phone them, I want to say, I'm going to see you this time in three months, six months, nine months. So it really frustrates me when I don't have good news. It hurts me a lot. Sometimes, yeah, you can Skype them beyond the phone, but I don't want to have online relationships. I want to have that physical relationship where you're there with them, you hold their hands, you see the joy in their eyes. Um, so it's, it, it kills me. For various domestic reasons, they haven't come over here since I changed my life and decided to leave Australia now almost, what, five, six years ago. I was stuck in my little world in this country, saying, oh, there's too much going on for me to change. And I sort of slapped myself, said, come on, the world's really big. And I did something against my desire and intuition, uh, which was to change. I think in life we all get stuck, desperate for the change, and we just don't do it and I made a choice to follow love. Um, and I went to Australia, and then my training as a person, with my heart and soul and my experience of life. <sighs> this woman that I met, gorgeous, she was free. I had come from um, an expressive child, who was like, ah, ah, you know, like a kid from Brazil, running around on the streets, expressing their emotions, to suddenly being taken and put in a big box, or a tiny box, whereby, ah, shh, you know, you just had to do that, you know, and my parents didn't cry. And my father's laugh was like, <laughs> you know, that's a suppression. My mother's uh, way of laughing was like, <laughs> so she kind of pointed and laughed at. My partner, in the course of the relationship, brought me up to learn to express myself, to be freer, to say, to stand up for myself, to not do the typical British bite the bottom lip. Having said that, 
we did fight because of her overly expressive nature. I couldn't tolerate that very well. And in the end, she was bringing me down and I couldn't handle it anymore. There are many ways that you could live a life. Some people choose to live a life which I consider to be a lie, a false relationship. That's not how I want to live my life. And that's also how I don't want to show my children as an example of living their life. So I made a choice to leave Australia to build something, to create something, to share with them. Will I still be disco bunnying tomorrow? I don't know. The disco bunny's very happy, but Pablo hasn't seen his children. Yeah, Pablo is not in a position to hop on a plane to go to his children. Pablo has not been to Brazil. Pablo still thinks about Brazil. I'm very good at looking after the disco bunny, not very good at looking after myself. If I look after myself, the disco bunny will be disco bunnying for as long as the disco bunny can stand. actually wasting his talent. Um, I think we think he should aspire to greater things even than the disco bunny. <laughs> we have seen it online perhaps, mm. but we're going to see it in the flesh shortly, we hope. I feel nervous, because I always feel nervous. I feel extra nervous, because my parents are watching. Growing up, I, I always had a dream that my art will give me the, the opportunity to do the greater thing. The movement of people, the creating of parties and events. People can learn that where they are today is not where they have to be for the rest of their life if they don't want to. I don't know, it just gave me energy. Energy, yeah. All of a sudden, like I was feeling so cold, I'm like, it's boring, and then we changed our mood. Yeah. You can be a disco bunny. He just wears sparkly outfits and takes the focus off himself and makes other people happy. find your own happiness and change your circumstances and create your own success. And that is what the Disco Bunny is going to do. I'm going to make a success story. This world, it's so unkind. One day you're king, the next you're crucified. What good is true without love? What good are we? If just flesh and blood In this world It's so cruel You think you won the game And they've gone and changed the rules But maybe I'm just a fool to believe There's something beautiful Inside of you and me Ha, 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 ha.